A week after Israeli elections, it is uncertain what course Israel's new government will follow. Concerned about the future of the Middle East peace process, the leaders of Jordan and Egypt joined PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat on Wednesday to urge Prime Minister-elect Netanyahu to honor Israel's commitments to the Palestinians. Joining me, Dr. Edward Said of Columbia University. He is a former member of the Palestinian National Council, and I am pleased to have him now. I should take note of the fact that before the election in March, he went to the West Bank, and uh, he has said in the current issue of Time magazine, quote, the Middle East peace process as we have known it is, I believe, at an end. When he says that, he also says that perhaps, perhaps, uh, I'm not at all convinced that anything but a time minority of Israel's, Israel has had any change of heart about peace. Having been in the territories a couple of months ago and seeing what the de devastation of the Israeli-American peace process has wrought on the Palestinians, I came to the painful conclusion that better a crude and brutal Netanyahu, your characterization, than a posturing but also crude and brutal Perez. Perez had invaded Lebanon a few weeks before and caused tremendous devastation. 400,000 refugees, um, 160 or 70 people killed, c civilians. Hezbollah, uh, largely untouched. Israel still in occupation of a fairly substantial, about 10, 12 percent of Lebanon in the south, still in occupation of that. And I think that was a way of trying to convince Israelis uh, that Perez was a tough man. He had shut down the territories uh, so that you couldn't move around. When I was there in March, I couldn't get into Gaza, for example. There are endless lines. The Palestinians forced us to go from one place to another for work or whatnot, um, unable to cross. Uh, queues stopped for hours on end. Students unable to go to classes, 70% unemployment, um, thousands of people picked up, not only by the Israelis but by the Palestinians, on the suspicion that they were potential terrorists. And what you have is a situation that was so grim that I thought it was a lot worse in March of 96, three years after the peace process, than the period I had been in Israel before, which was three years before that, 93, before Oslo. Mm. I think it's much worse now. Because? I think Palestinians are discouraged. They're, they have realized, I think as a people, we've lost the battle with the Israelis. We lost our land, we lost our society in 1948. There's been a military occupation since 1967. And the peace agreement that I think is a, can be characterized as a way of maintaining Israeli control over the West Bank and Gaza but having Palestinians do the work, municipal and other, and Israel retaining the real power. Um, if you look at the West Bank map, which very few newspapers in this country have reproduced as a result of the last agreement, you'll notice that Palestinian autonomy in the cities, the six cities that have been uh, vacated of Israeli soldiers, um, amounts to about 2%. The rest of the, the West Bank territory is held by the Israelis. So there's a sense in which people... But it's part of the plan, mm. the peace process, that it all... That it what? That, that, that most of it will be... Returned? Over the per period of time will be returned. Well, it, th that's not entirely clear. You see, there are certain provisions of the peace treaty that uh, have not been adhered to. For example, in the very first agreement, there was supposed to be free passage between Gaza and the West Bank because that, that passes through Israeli territory. That still hasn't happened. Arafat today has to get permission to leave Gaza from the Israelis. And this, of course, I mean, he's a VIP, he's a leader and so on and so forth. So what in effect has happened is that the Palestinians have now been divided up into small pockets throughout the West Bank, uh, giving one the feeling of you can call them Bantu stands in the old South African style, with these roads built around them by the Israelis, connecting the settlements. The expropriations of the land have to continued to take place since the first peace agreement was signed in uh, September of 1993. And so, you know, for most Palestinians, Perez's measures uh, are, appear to be security and all these other things, but for Palestinians, life has gotten much harsher. And of course, he's plausible. He seems Sets like the peace process. Absolutely, absolutely. 
there's much greater unemployment. The rate of, um, of production has gone down in nearly every field of life. Uh, the schools function badly. Uh, a, lot of it, a lot of the blame has to be laid, of course, on the Palestinian Authority on Arafat, which is corrupt. There's much more uh, security now than there, than there ever was before. People are arrested. I arrived on a Tuesday night. On, a Wednesday, on Wednesday morning, I was a subject of a 15-minute attack on the official Palestinian radio because I had spoken out you against... You publicly criticized Chairman Arafat. No, no, no. I had said specifically, well, that, but that wasn't why I was being attacked. I was attacked because I had protested at their treatment of journalists. They picked them up, torture them, force them to write what is required by the chairman and so on and so forth, and I was attacked for that. Uh, there were demonstrations all through the West Bank by students. The Tony Lewis wrote the piece, I think, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, that was a later story. Yeah. Yeah, the, and, and, same, and the, same, the idea. same idea. Same idea. So uh, what you have is, a, is an appalling situation. Now, you could call it peace, but I, I think it would be hard to do that, except, uh, you know, in a kind of euphemistic way. Now, Netanyahu has made no bones about it. He's not going to give back more territory. He is, for him, Palestinians are a subclass of people. He hasn't said that. Well, in, in all but. I mean, he has, uh, he has made it absolutely clear that uh, Israeli Jews have more rights on the West Bank and Gaza, in the occupied territories, than Palestinians do. Um, and his, his measures, judging by the people he associates with, like Sharon and uh, Eitan, are going to be severe and draconian in the extreme. So I think, all in all, uh, the, the, the situation is aggravated also by the fact that the, the Arabs, including the the people that you've mentioned, uh, Hussein, Mubarak, etc., they're basically powerless. I mean, the, the disparity in power between Israel and the Arabs now is so great, particularly because of the support of the United States, but also Israel is a nuclear power, that I think the idea of peace ha is now so, um, so in inapt a phrase, really, uh, inapt an idea, that it's really something imposed yeah. on, on weak and, and, defense and basically defenseless people. Boy, you must be really depressed. Well, no, because I mean, like I think... The, well, I, well, but listen to me for a second. You don't like the Palestinian Authority. Mm. You know, you don't like the sort of autocratic style of Chairman Arafat. Mm. You don't like what Israelis have done. You don't like the peace process. You say that you Palestinians have to recognize they've lost the war mm -hmm. from 48 on. There's never going to be a you believe, a Palestinian state. No, no, I never said that. Okay. I didn't I, say I was, that. No, okay. no, I didn't no, say I that. I think, I, no, I had not finished my sentence. Yeah, right. But, you know, my point was you don't believe a Palestinian state that would represent what you think a Palestinian state ought to be. Is basically out, of this, out of this process. In other words, I, th I think this process is intended to maintain a kind of hegemony of the very powerful over the basically powerless. Now, the situation will change, I think, over time. I mean, I, I, th I think the folly from the Israeli point of view of, and the American point of view of this kind of peace, which is basically engineered not to give people their rights. And, and in the, the, the Anthony Lewis articles that you mentioned, I mean, that, that is a refrain you hear every Palestinian saying this today, that one feels a sense of not only discouragement and desperation, but also humiliation, that what appeared to be our national struggle is now masked or covered up in a, in a, in a series of euphemisms that simply don't, don't address the realities. Now, as I was about to say, the, the, the mistake I think the Israelis are making is that you cannot, and Arafat's making the same mistake, you cannot compel people for indefinitely to maintain a position of submission and deference so long as their rights are denied, so long as their economic well-being is being denied, so long as their basic human rights are being denied, something will, will, will change. It may be a change amongst many Israelis. I, I think that's what Rabin and Perez recognized. Hmm. I really do, don't you? No, that I They I, recognized that. I think Rabin recognized it after the Intifada which he was a principal. Well, I think there it was a question of how do you contain this? That is to say, you get... No, I, or that I, you I, didn't, want to con didn't want to do. You d he thought somehow that to do what was necessary to contain it was simply impractical. Impractical. You couldn't do it. But there, there, there are ways... And, and not good for the Israeli psyche. But the troops are still there. The, uh, the, the amount of uh, firepower directed against Arabs generally, potentially and otherwise. You see these young Israeli soldiers stopping Palestinian families 
along the roadside. I mean, that still goes on. And I don't believe that the colonization, the settlement policy of the Israeli government, which was not changed by Rabin and uh, Perez. Yes, it was. Uh, no, no, absolutely okay. not. They, didn't, they stopped the no, no, number they didn't. of settlements. Absolutely not. They didn't absolutely stop the number of, of settlements. They, they stopped the number of settlements, okay. but they didn't stop the expropriation Expansion of those existing. A, and the expropriation of lands for security purposes, for the building of roads, for military, re for military regions, those continued. I mean, I'll give you an example, which occurred while I was there. You now drive through Bethlehem, and Bethlehem has been sub subdivided, which is an Arab city, is subdivided into, on the, on the left, One the road... One of the cities that the Arabs have now taken yeah, over. Yeah, taken over. On the left, there's a, there's a road that takes you into the Arab city. On the right, there's a big barrier, and a new road is being built because of Rachel's tomb. So, in effect, the entrance of the city, which, which depends a great deal on tourism, is now cordoned off by an Israeli barricade, which makes entrances and exits into Bethlehem a very complicated and difficult thing. That's recent. I mean, that's not something that took place 10 years ago. That took place in, in the last few months. This kind of thing is another way of administering, in effect, an, an occupation, you see. As we near this, I mean, as we end this, where, what's, what's the hope you think? What do you think is somehow you believe, if you believe that the battle has been lost, what is it that gives you some sense of optimism well, that history will mm. take its time to produce a result that you can be... I, there's no guarantee that that would happen. I mean, uh, look at the Native Americans. Uh, they were the owners of this land. Uh, what has become of them? Uh, that's, a, that's a grim possibility for Palestinians today, I think. On the other hand, I, I do feel that there is a spirit among the 55% of Palestinians who don't live in Palestine, the so-called diaspora Palestinians, who still feels an attachment to the land and still feels that building institutions, trying to move us along the road towards democracy, putting more, let's say, moral and political pressures on the Israelis. Arafat's not immortal. I mean, he is the great find for the Israelis. He will do what they want. He is their enforcer. Now, he will not last forever. There is a younger generation, both of Palestinians and of Israelis. And I think the hope there is that some transformation of consciousness, especially among Israelis, for whom this idea of security is a kind of fantasy that, uh, that uh, has to have limits in the end, because they live in an area surrounded by all these other people, those are the factors that, that produce some small amount of optimism. It's not a great deal of optimism, because as I say, we're rapidly moving down the other road. It's always good to have you here. Uh, we're out of time. Edward Said, um, when will you go back? Well, I'm going back in early July, I hope, for another, for another trip. Uh, I'm curious to see what the situation is like after, after. the... Uh, and I'm a member of a, of a board of the Citizens' Rights Group. Uh, Dr. Siraj, who was arrested by Arafat, yeah. is the head of it. And I'm a member of the board. I've never attended the meetings. I haven't been able to, but I hope to this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'd like to see what the situation is. Are they turtles on that tie? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. It's great to see you. Good to see you. We'll be right back. We remember Joe Mitchell when we come back. Stay with us.